everybody, this is Emily with Snake Discovery. In the wild, reptiles and amphibians that eat insects, which we refer to as insectivores, eat a wide variety of those insects. And those insects eat a wide variety of plants, roots, nuts, and even other insects. So in the wild, reptiles and amphibians are getting all sorts of vitamins and minerals in their diet, but in captivity, we're unable to provide that kind of variety because most keepers provide between one and three different types of feeder insects to their animals, and that's really just not enough. So that's why it's so important to sneak in those vitamins and minerals in other ways. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the importance of dusting and gut loading your feeder insects. Nutrients that are typically absent from a captive reptile's diet would be vitamins E, vitamin B1, also known as thiamine, vitamin A, calcium, and vitamin D3. Vitamin E acts as an antioxidant and helps boost a reptile's immune system. Vitamin B1, also known as thiamine, helps make sure that their nervous system is functioning properly. So if they lack vitamin B1, they can develop neurological issues including seizures. Vitamin A is utilized for eye and skin health. As a result, reptiles lacking in vitamin A often have issues shedding their skin, as well as eye issues like conjunctivitis. Calcium is one of the most important minerals in a reptile's diet because not only do they need it for bone and, in the case of turtles, shell growth, but females need extra calcium reserves in order to produce eggs. If a female reptile does not have enough calcium in her system to produce eggs, she'll take it straight from her bones and that can lead to all sorts of health issues. The last vitamin often lacking in a captive reptile's diet is vitamin D3. And this is essential in order for a reptile to metabolize calcium into their body. If a reptile is lacking in vitamin D3 and therefore it's not able to metabolize calcium, that's when they often get something called hyperparathyroidism or metabolic bone disease, or for short, we just call it MBD. But that's really an umbrella term for all sorts of bone deformities and kinks and spinal issues that can occur and do occur if a reptile doesn't have vitamin D3. In the wild, reptiles absorb vitamin D3 through their skin while basking in the sun and absorbing those ultraviolet rays. But in captivity, we keep the majority of our reptiles indoors where they do not have access to fresh sunlight. That's why you have to provide vitamin D3 in another way. The good news is that there are two pretty simple ways that we can provide vitamin D3 to our reptiles. The first of which is by providing a UVB light that will kind of replicate the sun's rays and allow them to absorb that D3 into their bodies through their skin. This is often used for reptiles that like to bask in the sunlight in the wild, like diurnal species such as bearded dragons, or like this Cuban false chameleon here. Now it's important to note that if you use a UVB light, you have to replace that bulb every six to eight months because even if the bulb still appears to work, the UVB from it will wear away after about six to eight months. For nocturnal species of reptiles that don't naturally bask in the sun and it can actually be sensitive to the sun's rays, like leopard geckos or African fat-tailed geckos, it's best to get them their vitamin D3 in the form of a powder. And you just simply dust their insects with a calcium powder that's fortified with vitamin D3 and then they metabolize that internally. Now what species of reptile you are keeping will determine what type of calcium powder you want to provide them with. Calcium either has vitamin D3 or it does not, or it has high levels or basically low levels of D3. And it's important to know that you can overdose a reptile with vitamin D3 and that is actually toxic and fatal to them. So if you have a, like say a bearded dragon that likes to bask in natural sunlight and you provide them with a UV bu UVB bulb like you should, you actually do not want to provide them with a calcium powder that has high amounts of vitamin D3 because that could overdose them. Instead, you want to provide them with a calcium powder that has lower amounts of D3, like mineral here. This is what we use for our basking species of lizards, like our Timor monitors. But on the other hand, if you have a nocturnal species of reptile, like a leopard gecko that does not normally or naturally bask in the light, they come out at night, then you have to give them their D3 in a different way. Instead, you just get them the calcium powder with high amounts of vitamin D3 and then they'll just metabolize it through their food. So in a nutshell, for diurnal basking species of reptiles, I recommend mineral because it has quite low levels of vitamin D3 and it sh shouldn't cause any toxicity or overdose issues. Whereas if you have a nocturnal species of lizard, I would recommend RepCal brand um, calcium powder with vitamin D3. There's tons of it in here. 
We actually conducted a little bit of an experiment on our own using these two brands. We took a clutch of 14 baby garter snakes and we split them up into two groups of seven. One group had their food dusted with the RepCal calcium powder and a generic multivitamin. And the other group had their food dusted with the mineral along with that same multivitamin. And we compared the results and we wanted to see if one group grew faster than the other. All these baby garter snakes started out at just a single gram. They were so tiny and actually it, they were so small they didn't register on the scale until I put two of them on there and then there were, they were two grams. But anyway, they are now all at about two grams and they all seem to have grown at the same rate. So at least for garter snake growth, based on our experiment with 14 babies, which isn't a huge sample size, I know, but from our experience, garter snakes, it seems like you could use either one. Now that we've discussed the importance of adding extra vitamins and minerals into your captive reptiles diet, let me explain to you which ones you should be using. We've already touched on vitamin D3 and calcium with the RepCal and Mineral brands and how each are best for just different types of reptiles. However, what about all of the other vitamins that may be lacking in your reptiles diet? Well, to make sure your reptile is getting enough vitamin A, E, and vitamin B1 or thiamine, I recommend the RepCal Herptivite. This one contains all three of those vitamins and it's a wonderful generic multivitamin to use for really anything. But now the question is, how often should you be using these powders? That is the debatable part, and really it's something that I just recommend to do your own research on because it'll vary based on the species you have, its age, its size, and its breeding condition. The gen general rule of thumb is to use a calcium powder twice a week and a multivitamin once a week. However, babies that are growing more and need more calcium in their bodies will probably need a little bit more calcium in their diets. Whereas reptiles that are an adult and they're not growing as much probably don't need quite as much calcium. This also plays a role in breeding reptiles. If you have a female that is producing eggs, you definitely want to increase her um, calcium intake during the breeding season. Whereas if you have an adult male lizard, he probably doesn't need as much calcium. Some keepers and breeders will tell you that you should dust your insects separately, like one meal should only be dusted with calcium and another meal should only be dusted with a multivitamin. And the thought behind this is that calcium degrades multivitamins, but that's recently been proven not to be necessarily true. So there's actually a lot of keepers out there who will blend the two together and just dust them all at the same time. And they've actually found benefits in the presence of one actually assisting in the absorption of the other. So it might be beneficial to mix them together. However, after you dust with a calcium or a multivitamin, it's important to feed the insect immediately because that insect will start grooming itself and cleaning off all the powder that has just coated its body. And the longer that insect goes without being eaten, the less uh, vitamins and minerals are gonna be on its body. The reason why they like to clean themselves off right away is because insects breathe through a series of spiracles, which are small openings along the side of their abdomen. And these powders kind of block those spiracles, so it makes it hard for them to breathe. So you can't blame them for wanting to clean themselves off, but that is why it's so important to feed those dusted insects right away. Okay, so we've pretty much covered dusting insects. Now let's talk about gut loading insects. You're essentially just feeding the insects a vitamin and mineral enriched diet so that they themselves are healthier when the reptile eats them. Many keepers that use the gut loading technique will feed the insects more natural like plant-based diets like carrots so that you can boost their vitamin A levels or dark leafy greens like kale or collard greens to help boost their vitamin E levels or you can actually buy calcium fortified feeder insect diets so that their calcium levels are also higher than normal. Another route you can take is kind of a hack in the reptile community. You can buy chicken layer formula, which is basically food you feed to chickens while they're laying their eggs. And that's very high in calcium because it's increasing the chicken's calcium level for when they're producing eggs. You can just use that for feeder insects too. But if you want something that's more marketed towards reptile keepers specifically, then I actually use and recommend, and again, this isn't a sponsor, but I recommend the uh, Sticky Tongue Farms Vita All. This boosts them full of vitamin A and vitamin B. You'd still wanna use like a calcium powder with vitamin D3, depending on what kind of reptile you have. But I found that this, this is like an alfalfa dry, alfalfa based meal. And I have used it for my rodents and for my insects. And I've found that if I just keep like, giant mealworms in a container with like a little sprinkle of this, they stay alive for like a couple of weeks on end if 
unless they get eaten before that. But I found that this actually keeps insects alive for quite a while and then you can keep them in the enclosure and the reptile just eats them when they're ready. And if the reptile accidentally eats a little bit of the vital all, that's okay because that's what you're trying to pack full of your uh, insects so that the reptile eats it anyway. But that basically covers everything I wanted to share with you in terms of the importance of adding extra vitamins and minerals into your reptile's diet and how often you should be doing it as well as what brands or what types you should use. Basically it all boils down to doing your own research and I always encourage people to grab their information from at least three credible sources before making an educated decision when it comes to their own animal because not only will it vary based on the species you have but also its age, its size, its gender, and its breeding condition. So that can really make the uh, usage of each one of these vary. There's no real like one answer fits all reptiles. Anyway, keep doing your own research. Thank you for watching today's video and thank you to all of our amazing Patreon backers for your generosity and support on this channel so that we can continue doing our own research to share with you, including like the experiment we did with the garter snakes. That was a lot of fun. And we'll see you next time.